Hey everybody, this is Evan Abrams. Today I'm just going to do a quick thing about vignettes because somebody asked me, Evan, how do you make the vignettes on your videos to make things look cool? And for those of you who don't know, a vignette is a road tax on vehicles used in several non-English speaking European countries. Probably not. A short impressionistic scene that focuses on the moment or given, what? 500 square foot vineyard. Let me just, anybody ever played Balderdash? I freaking love that game. A central part of a postage stamp. So what we're actually talking about is photographic vignettes, which appear around the outside of the lens. Now this happens for many reasons, one of which is because your lens is not correct. Lenses cause vignetting because they either come out too much or the actual elements inside the lens are stacked in such a way that it causes shadows towards the outside. For our purposes though, we're talking about adding vignettes in post. If you want them to happen live, then it's just a matter of changing your lenses, changing your focal depths and such so that it happens to come inside. Or you can put a lens hood on, like I'm faking with my hand. We're going to be creating a soft gradient towards the outside. And in After Effects, there are any number of ways to cause this. So I'm going to show you a bunch real quick. That's enough vignettes. And uh, let's get to it. In my office. Okay, now we're in the office, which is incredibly dark because I took one of my lamps out. But uh, here's my computer, and let's get to it. Okay, so we are going to go about making vignettes three separate ways. And before we get into it, the first thing you want to do is know your composition. So all we did was import some footage, drag it onto the new comp button, and we are working in 1920 by 1080. This is that down home 1080p video. And you want to know that because a lot of the numbers that I talk about and use are going to be important based on the size of your frame. Okay, first method, new solid. Make that a black solid. Boom. Hey, look at that. You've already gone ahead and blacked out all of your frame. The first method is to use a solid and a mask. And so we want to use an ellipse tool. And you can make this really quick by double clicking on the ellipse tool button up here. And that'll snap an ellipse right into your frame. If you don't want to do that, you can just click and drag or, you know, however you want to make that mask happen. You want to set the mask to subtract. Ah, oh, look at that. We are already halfway there. The two things that you use are the mask feather and for us a good 360 is good. Mask expansion is the same as the feather. And what does that do? Puts a nice subtle little blurriness right around the outside. And with this mask, you get to play with the size here to bring it in or out and feather it more or less, you know? depending on what kind of look you are trying to achieve. And so you get to tighten and loosen this and you can see how it kind of creates that beveled look to the lens. So if you're faking a fish eye, you're gonna to wanna to use something like this. Now, another thing that's important is your lens is not actually an ellipse, your lens is a circle. But don't let that get to you because you can just change the shape of your mask, which uh, I do by double clicking upon the handles, pulling it out just like that and you know then just mess with your expansion and stuff and you know get it all figured out so you can change the shape pretty much any way you want um and you should also know that changing the blending mode is going to affect how this is perceived as well so for example this is classic color burn which makes some interesting spooky stuff, a little bit of color correcting, and you'll be well on your way to shooting Paranormal Activity 4, fan fiction, whatever the crap you want to make. If you want to observe how it's affecting just the area, turn your footage off and you can see what that looks like. So that's method the first. Method number two. New, and we are going to instead use a new shape layer. Now, a lot of people don't use shape layers, and that's okay because they're incredibly intimidating. So next thing to do, go into your shape layer, go to add, and you're going to add an ellipse. Twirl down the ellipse, change the size up, 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 so that it is larger than your frame. Um, 2300 will do. Now you go add, fill. So you've filled it in. Go up here, fill, radial gradient, Okay, and now you're going to twirl down the gradient fill here. I know, bear with me. 
Now you want to set the start point at zero, good, and the end point is going to be half of whatever this size number is. So you can do that by copying that, select here, paste, and then just hit slash two, it'll do the math for you, and blam, there you go. And now you go up to here to this fill, and you'll notice that we've got something pretty familiar to anyone who's ever used Photoshop or Illustrator, is a gradient editor. Now these points at the top are your opacity sliders, so by default it usually comes in as going from uh, white to black. Now basically all you're going to do is take your bottom two colors and set them both to black. Doesn't really matter because you're just using both. And we want to mess with the opacity which is on the top. Now set one of the opacities down to zero and then you use the midpoint to kind of define how things go or you know you push this out or you do whatever you know really it is wide open and you get a lot of fine control in here and a lot of the guesswork is taken out too it's a lot more precise than the mask and uh, it's not necessarily quicker but it gets the job done so boom blam and same thing as before set it to you know whatever color style is going to make you happy but uh, you know leave it on normal if you like and that is method number two shape layer okay here's the last method new solid just like the first time but trust me it gets better now instead of putting on a mask we're going to put on an effect this effect is called the circle and it is in the generate folder generate circle double click put that on Step one, invert the circle. Boom, you're inverting circles already. Look at us go. Change its color to black. Color, black. Now, radius, crank that radius up. And feather, feather that radius out. Keep cranking, keep going till you're comfortable. Continue. Okay, things are looking pretty good. Now, you might think, well, you've just accomplished the same thing as you did with the other two. What is so special about your stupid circle jerk idea, Evan? Well, what's special about it is select the effect, go here where it says Animation Presets, go Save Selection as Animation Preset. Now, you you can see that I've got Vinny 1080, Vinny 720. Now, you save this as something and then every time you come back to the project making a new one time me on this one okay check this out new and solid bam and vinny 1080 oh, oh look at that i'm so fast don't shop that around to people but uh quickest vignettes in the west pow pow right there so that's probably the fastest way to do it you do it once you save it in your presets and you will be fine to uh, do stuff for the rest of your life um, or at least until you uninstall this or move your presets or whatever but creating animation presets is what's going to make the difference uh, between taking hours and taking minutes on projects and I highly recommend that you go ahead and streamline your workflows and do all that nerdy stuff if this is something you want to do as a career then uh, definitely do that and you know if it's, really if it's just a hobby you'll make it much more enjoyable when you take a lot of the grunt work out of stuff so remember best method black solid circle or as i now call them vinny 1080 vinny 720 uh create presets for every frame size and maybe some different looks so that you can know, hmm, scary, and then boom. Same thing with color correcting, is, you know, create color correction presets that you like, throw them in there. You may not want to spend thousands of dollars on Magic Bullet, but uh, definitely consider making your own presets and defining your own looks and saving them for later and just making your own life a little bit easier. So I'm Evan Abrams. If this has been helpful to you, you know, share it with your friends. Uh, check me out on the Twitters 
at EC Abrams. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. If you have any hate mail, send me that too. Uh, I love to get hated on. Uh, trolling is a hobby of mine. Let's do it up. Uh, I'm Evan Abrams. Thanks for coming out. I hope we all learned something. I hope you throw away those first two methods that I wasted your time on. And uh, have a great day, and I'll see you around the internet.